Pigeon is April Lika, and playing the role of Cecily Pigeon is Lorraine Romer. This is our final production for the spring, and we are very appreciative that you could be here. Yeah, 
calm down. I'm a cop, you know. I can arrest the whole lousy gang. <laughs> My friend Murray, the cop, is right. Let's just play cards. Please, hold them up. I can't see where I marked them. You were in the kids from the PAL. Yeah, but you still love me. Roy, sweetie, right? Yeah, yeah. Come on, that's not good enough. I want to hear it again in front of the whole poker game. I love you, Oscar Madison. You don't take any of this serious, seriously, do you? You owe money to your wife, your government, your friends. What do you want me to do, Roy? Jump in a garbage disposal and grind myself to death? Life goes on, Roy, even for those of us who are divorced, broken, floppy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I told you not to call me during the game. <laughs> you know I do, Doc. I, I, I can't talk to you right now. What, what's that? Okay, all right, just a second. Murray, it's your wife. <laughs> Well, years? Well, they were such a happy couple. 
12 years doesn't mean you're a happy couple, it just means you're a long couple. Go figure, Phoenix and Francis? What are you surprised at? He used to sit there every Friday night and tell us how they were fighting. I know, but who believes Phoenix? Well, what happened? She wants out, that's all. He'll go to pieces. I know Felix. He's gonna try something crazy. That's all he ever used to talk about. My beautiful wife, my wonderful wife. What happened? His beautiful, wonderful wife can't stand him, that's what happened. He'll kill himself. You hear what I'm saying? He's gonna go out you and try to kill up. himself. Stop being a cop for two minutes. Where'd he go, Oscar? He went out to kill himself. What did I tell you? <laughs> Are you serious? That's what she said. He was going out to kill himself. He didn't want to do it at home because the kids were sleeping. Why? Because that's Felix, that's why. Christ, you know what he's like. He sleeps on the windowsill. Love me or I'll jump. Because he's a nut, that's why. He's right. Remember he tried something like that in the army? She wanted to break up the engagement, so he started cleaning guns in his mouth. Talk, that's all Felix is. Talk. Now, is that what he said? In those words, I'm going to kill myself? I don't know in what words, Vinny. She didn't read it to me. You mean he left her a note? No, he sent a telegram. A suicide telegram. Who sends a suicide telegram? Felix the nut, that's who. Can you imagine getting a thing like that? She even has to tip the kid a quarter. I don't get it. If he wants to kill himself, why does he send a telegram? Don't you see how his mind works? If he leaves her a note, she might not get it till Monday. Then he's got no excuse for not being dead. This way, for a dollar ten, he's got a chance to be saved. You mean he really doesn't want to kill himself, he just wants sympathy. What he'd really like is to see himself at the funeral and sit in the back. He'd be the biggest cry on air. He's right. Sure I'm right. We get these kind of cases every day. All they want is attention. We got a guy who calls us every Saturday afternoon from the George Washington Bridge. I don't know. Never can't tell what a guy would do when he's hysterical. Nah, no, nine out of ten times they don't jump. What about the tenth time? They jump. He's right, there's a possibility. Nah, not with Felix. I know, he's too nervous to kill himself. The man wears a seatbelt in a drive-in movie. <laughs> Isn't there some place we can look for him? Where? Where would you look? Who knows where he is? Of course. If you're gonna kill yourself, where's the safest place to do it? With your friends, right? Wait a minute, let's all calm down. He may be hysterical. If we're calm, maybe he'll be calm. That's right. That's how they do it with those guys on the ledge. Talk nice and soft. Well, what do we say? We don't say nothing, like we never heard a thing. Are you guys through with the discussion? Because he already could have hung himself out the hall. Then he opened the door. Remember, like we don't know nothing. Let's chill. 
Tony here, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's better. Hey, uh, you want to sit down and play, Felix? It's still early. I'm sure we'll be here till three, four in the morning. I don't know. I just don't feel much like playing right now. Oh. Well, uh, what what do you feel like doing? I don't know. No, I'll find something. Don't, don't worry about me. Where are you going? <coughs> to the John. Alone? <laughs> I always go alone. Why? Just wondering. Hey, uh, you gonna be in there long? As long as it takes. Are you crazy letting him go in the John alone? Well, what did you want me to do? Stop it! Go in with him! Suppose he just has to go to the John. Well, supposing he does, he's better off being embarrassed than dead. How's he gonna kill himself in the John? What do you mean how? Razor blades, pills, anything that's in there. That's the kid's bathroom. The worst he could do is brush his teeth with that. He could jump. That's right. Isn't there a window in there? Yeah, but it's only six inches wide. He could break the glass. He could cut his wrist. He could also flush himself into the East River. Look, I'm telling you, he's not gonna find him. Shh. Listen, he's crying. Felix is crying. Isn't that terrible? Come on, Oscar, do something. Say something. What? What do you say to a man who's crying in your bathroom? He's coming! Honestly, I'm just crying. 
Yeah, let's not all stand around looking at him, all right? Let's break it up, huh? Yeah, no, don't stand here looking at him, please. Come on, guys, just call him right, huh? You guys, I, I, I'm really ashamed. Promise me you won't call anybody, please. Please, don't tell anybody. Promise me you won't tell anybody, Jimmy. Well, I'm going to Florida tomorrow. Oh, well, have a good time. Thanks. We were going to go to Florida next winter without the kids. Now they're going to go without me. <laughs> well, maybe one of us should stay. He's going to be all right. Well, supposing he tries something again. He's not going to try anything. How do you know he's not going to try anything? I'm not going to try anything again. I'm very tired. You hear? He's very tired. He had a busy night. I'll see you, though. Hey, Austin. If anything happens, just call me. I live three blocks away. I can be here five minutes. Um, if you need me, I'll be at the Hotel Meridian in Miami Beach. <laughs> oh, you're going to be the first one I call, Vinny. <laughs> you sure? I'm sure. All right. Good night, Felix. Uh, try to get a good night's sleep. I promise you things are going to look a lot brighter in the morning. Take away some the machine.
and I found myself looking out the window, and suddenly I began to think about jumping. What changed your mind? Nothing. I'm still thinking about it. Drink this. Oscar, I don't want to get divorced. I don't want my life to suddenly change. What am I going to do? What, what am I going to do? First, you're going to drink your scotch. Then you and I are going to sit down, and we're going to plan out a whole new life for you. Without Francis, without the kids? It's been done before. Now, you don't understand, Oscar. I'm nothing without my family. I'm nothing! What do you mean, nothing? You're something. You're a person. You're flesh and blood and bone and hairs and nails and ears. You're not a fish. You're not a buffalo. You're you. <laughs> you walk and talk and cry and complain and eat little green pills and send suicide telegrams. <laughs> Nobody else does that, Felix. You're the only one of its kind in the world. O Oscar, you've been through it yourself. Man, what did you do? I mean, how did you get through those first couple of nights? I did exactly what you were doing. Getting hysterical? No, drinking. Drinking. I drank for four days and four nights, and then I fell out of a window. I was bleeding, but I was forgetting. How can you forget your kids? How can you wipe out 12 years of marriage? You can't. When you walk into eight empty rooms every night, it hits you in the face like a wet glove. But those are the facts of you you got to face it. You can't spend the rest of your life crying. It annoys people in the movies. Now be a good boy and drink your scotch. I can imagine what Francis must be going through. What do you mean what she's going through? Well, it's a lot harder on a woman, Oscar. She's all alone there in the house with the kids. She can't get out like I can. I mean, where is she going to go now to find somebody in her age with two kids? Where? I don't know, Felix. Maybe somebody will come to the door. There, there's 100,000 divorces every year. There's got to be something good about it. What are you doing? I'm trying to clear my, my ears. My ears are closing up. I, I, I'm allergic to dust. It must be dust. Hey, what are you doing? I'm not going to jump. All right, relax. I'm not breathing. I used to drive Francis crazy with my allergies. For a while, the only thing she could wear was my aftershave lotion because I was allergic to a perfume. I was impossible to live with. It's a wonder she took it this long.
For our 10th wedding anniversary, I took her to see the Detroit Red Wings New York Rangers hockey game. She got hit with the puck. <laughs> and I still can't understand why she left me. That's how impossible I am. But that's not like you, Austin. I couldn't take it living alone. I mean, how will I work? They've got to fire me. How am I going to make a living? You'll stand on the street corners and cry, Felix. They'll throw nickels at you. <laughs> you'll work, Felix. You'll work. I think I had to call Francis. What for? Well, talk it out of here. You've talked it out. There are no words left in your entire marriage. When are you going to face up to that? I can't help it, Oscar. I don't know what to do. I'll tell you exactly what you're going to do. Tonight you're going to stay here, then tomorrow you're going to go over to her house, you're going to get your clothes and your electric toothbrush, and then you're going to move in with me. No, no, no. This is your apartment. I'd be in the way. Felix, I want you to move in with me. Why? I'm a pest. I know you're a pest. You don't have to keep telling me that. Why do you want me to move in with you? Because I can't stand living alone, all right? For Christ's sake, I'm proposing to you. What do you want, a ring? <laughs> you know, Oscar, if you're really serious, there's a lot I can do around here. I'm really handy around the house. I, I, I can fix things. You don't have to fix things. Oh, let me do something, Oscar. I want to do something. All right, fine. You can take my wife's initials off the towels. Anything you want. I can cook. I'm a terrific cook, you know. You don't have to cook. Are you kidding, Oscar? Two, three meals at home? We'll save a fortune. We gotta pay out more. All right, fine. You like Lego Land? Yeah, I like Lego Land. All right, I'll make it tomorrow night. Oh, I gotta call Frances. She's got my big pots. Will you forget about Frances? Forget her old pots. Don't drive me crazy before you move in. Hello. Oh, hello, Frances. I'm not here. I'm not here. You see me? You know where I am? I am not here. I am not here. Yes, you're here. <laughs> What does she sound like? What does she say? Is she crying? What does she sound like? Yes. Yes, he is. You can tell her from me I'm not coming back. I've taken just as much as she has. I've had it there. You can tell her from me here. She thinks I'm coming back. She's got another thing coming. Tell her. Go ahead. Go ahead. He's fine. Don't tell her I'm fine. You saw how he was carrying on before. Don't tell her I'm fine. Oh, God. Does she want to speak to me? Ask her if she wants to speak to me. Francis, do you want to speak to him? Give me the phone. I'll speak to her. Oh. She doesn't want to speak to me. She doesn't want to speak to me? All right, Francis. All right. Goodbye. She didn't want to speak to me? No. Well, why'd she call? She wants to know when you're coming over for your clothes. She wants to have the room repainted. Oh. Felix, it's almost one o'clock. I'm gonna go to bed. You want a cup of tea with some uh, some frutanos or raisinettos? Didn't want to talk to me, huh? Uh, what kind of pajamas do you want? I got stripes, dots, and animals. She'll paint it pink. She always wanted the damn little pink. I'm lousy with bedrooms. It's really heartbroken, isn't it? <coughs> I mean, I want to kill myself, and she's picking out colors. Felix, go to bed. You know, I'm glad. Because she finally made me realize it's over. It didn't sink in until just this minute. Felix, I want you to go to bed. Well, it doesn't seem so bad now. I mean, I mean, I think I can live with this thing. Well, live with it tomorrow. Go to bed tonight. Oh, fine. A little, a little while, Oscar. I want to start rearranging my life here. You got, you got a paper and a pencil? Not in a little while. Now, this is my house. I make up the bedtime. Oscar, please. i got to be alone for a while. i got to think. You, you go to bed. You go ahead. Go to bed. Um, I'm going to clean up the apartment. I'll see you in the morning. Felix, you don't have to clean up. I pay $1.50 an hour to clean up. Oh, come on, Oscar. You know I couldn't live with all this dirt in here. Look at this trash. You, you go to bed, and, uh, and I'll see you tomorrow morning. I'll make you breakfast. You're not going to do anything big, are you? Like rolling up the rugs? Ten minutes, that's all I'm going to be. No monkey business. No monkey business. I'm going to I'm gonna clean the house here, and I'll go right to bed. All right. Hey, hey, Oscar. Oscar. Yeah. I'm going to be all right. It's going to take me a few days, but I'm going to be all right. Good. Good night. Good night, Felix. Good night, Francis.
Okay. We got a cold glass of beer for Roy. Uh, uh, Marty. Mine, so, uh, where's your coaster? Uh, my what? Your coaster. The little round thing that goes under the glass. I think I bet it. Here, here. I knew I was way too much. Here. Watch a coat. Alright. Uh, scotch and a little bit of water? Scotch and a little bit of water. And I have my coaster. I hate to be a pest. You know what glasses do. They leave little rings on the table. They leave these little rings on the table. We have a nice warm sandwich for me. Oh, gee, thanks, Felix. So what kind is it? Uh, bacon, lettuce, and tomato with mayonnaise on pumpernickel toast. Well, where'd you get it? In the kitchen. I made it. You mean you put in toast and cooked bacon just for me? You don't like it? He'll make you meatloaf. It takes him five minutes. <laughs> Guys, I, I love to cook. D just eat over the plate, all right? I just stacked the floor here on the rug. Oscar, what do you want? Two, three and a half minute eggs and some petty fours. Double gin and tonic. Okay, I'll be right back. Guys, who turned off this dehumidifier? The what? The dehumidifier. Come on, Oscar. Come on, you don't mess around with this, with this machine, all right? I'm trying to take some of the grind out of the air. Whips. Murray, I'll give you $200 for your gun. I can't take anymore. I've had it up to here. In the last three hours, we played four minutes of poker. I'm not giving up my Friday nights to watch cooking and housekeeping. I can't breathe. That lousy machine is sucking everything out of the air. Hey, this is really delicious. Who wants a bite? Is the toast warm? Perfect, and just the right amount of mayonnaise. It's really a well-made sandwich. Hey, give me some. Uh, here, I don't want to spill any crumbs. Will you listen to this? Martha and Gertrude at the auto mask. What the hell happened to our poker game? I'm telling you that thing could kill us. They'll find us in here in the morning with our tongues on the floor. Do something, Oscar. Get them back in the game. Hey, don't come to me with your petty problems. You get this one stinking knot a week. I'm cooped up here with Mary Poppins 24 hours a day. <laughs> it was better before. With all the garbage and the smoke. It was better before. Hey, you notice what he does with the bread? What? cuts the crust off. That's why the sandwich is so light. Yeah. And then he only uses the soft green part of the lettuce. It's really delicious. <laughs> I'm going out of my mind. Damn it, Felix, will you get in here? Forget it, Oscar, I'm going home. Sit down. Will you sit down? Oscar, I'll buy a book and I'll start to read again. Sit down. Felix! It's all over. The day his marriage busted up was the end of our poker game. If you find some real players next week, call me. Hey, Speed, come on, you can't run out now. I'm a big loser. You had no one to blame but yourself. It's all your fault. You're the one who stopped him from killing himself. He's right now. <laughs> that man is absolutely right. Are you going to eat that pickle? Oh, I wasn't thinking of it. Why? Do you want it? Uh, unless you want it, it's your pickle. No, no, take it. I don't usually eat pickle. Deal of cards. <laughs> What'd you do that for? Deal of cards. You want to play poker, deal of cards. You want to eat, go to Denny's. You keep your sandwiches and your pickles to yourself. I'm losing $53 here and everybody's getting fat. Felix! Close the stinking restaurant and sit down. We got a poker game going on in here. What's that smell? Disinfectant. It's the cards. He washed the cards. All right, ready to play. What's the bet? Oh, God, I can't believe it. We're going to play cards again? Hey, Roy, sweetie, it's up to you. What do you say? I'm going to get in a cab and go down to Central Park. If I don't get some fresh air soon, you're going to have yourself a dead accountant. Hey, come on, what are you talking about, Roy? It's only 12 o'clock. Look, I've been sitting here breathing lice on ammonia for the past four hours. Nature did not intend for poker to be played like that. Next week, it is Louis Pasteur comes up after the game, and we play at the hotel's Dixie. Good night. Great. We got just enough for handball. I I I'm sorry, guys. Is it my fault? No. I guess no one feels much like playing tonight. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but something's happened to the old gang. I'll tell you exactly what's happened to the old gang. Everybody's getting divorced. We used to have better games when nobody could get out of the house. Well, I ought to be going too. Bibby and I are going to Asbury Park tomorrow. Oh, really? Just the two of you? That's really nice. You guys always do things like that together, don't you? Well, we have to. I don't know how to drive. <laughs> you come up, Bert? Yeah, why not? If I'm not home by midnight with a hero sandwich and a frozen eclair, Mimi will have an all points out on me. Ah, you guys got the life. Who? Who? You, the Marx Brothers. <laughs> laugh, laugh, laugh. I mean, what have you got to worry about? If you suddenly wanted to go down to the Playboy Club to hunt bunnies, who's going to stop you? I, I, I don't belong to the Playboy Club. 
I know you don't, Felix. It's just a figure of speech. Anyways, it's not such a bad idea. You should join. Why? Why? <laughs> Felix, because for $25 they give you a key, and you walk into paradise. My keys cost 30 cents, and I walk into corned beef and cabbage. Listen to me. <laughs> what are you talking about, Murray? You're a happily married man. I'm not talking about my situation, Vinny. I'm talking about yours. Fate has just played a cruel and rotten trick on you. So enjoy it. Come on, Vinny. You know, it's funny, Oscar. I don't know what it's like. They have no idea what we're going through. Well... I guess they just don't know what it feels like to live alone. I'd be immensely grateful to you, Felix, if you didn't clean up just now. I'd do just a few things. But we're playboys, us. <laughs> I really think they envy us. Felix, I'm not through dirtying up for tonight. Oh, come on, Oscar. Don't you see the irony of it? Yes, I do. No, I don't think you do. Felix, I'm telling you, I see the irony. All right, what is it? What's the irony? The irony is that unless we come to some other agreement, I'm going to kill you. That's the irony. <laughs> uh, what, what's wrong, Oscar? There's something wrong with this system. I don't think the two single men living together in a big eight-room apartment should have a cleaner house than my mother. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 hold it. I, I, I didn't say you had to clean it up. You don't have to clean anything up. What you do is worse. You're always in my bathroom hanging up towels. Whenever I smoke, you follow me around that with an ashtray. Last night, I saw you in the kitchen, mopping the floor, shaking your head and moaning, Footprints! Footprints! I didn't think it were yours! Well, they are mine! Damn it, I have feet, they make pranks. What do you want me to do, climb across the cabinets? No, I want you to walk on the floor! Well, I appreciate that. I really do. Hey, look, Oscar, I'm just trying to keep this place livable, all right? I didn't realize it irritated you that much. I just think I should have the right to decide when my bathtub needs to going over with Dutch cleanser. It's a democratic way, Felix. I was wondering how long it would take. How long what would take? Until I got on your nerves? I didn't say you got on my nerves. <laughs> just the same, you said I irritated you. You said I irritated you. I never said that. Well, then what did you say? I don't know what I said. What's the difference what I no, said? There's no difference. I was re repeating what I thought you said. Well, don't repeat what you thought I said. Repeat what I said. My God, that's irritating. See, you did say it. I don't believe this whole conversation. I'm sorry, Oscar. I, I don't know what's wrong with me. <coughs> don't pout. You want to fight, we'll fight, but don't pout. Fighting I win, pouting you win. You're right. You're right. Everything you say about me is absolutely right. <coughs> and don't give in so easily. I'm not always right. Sometimes you're right. You're right. I, I do that. I always figure I'm in the wrong. But this time you are wrong and I'm right. I'll leave you And don't sulk. That's the same as pouting. I know, I know. Damn, why can't I do one lousy thing right? Why didn't you throw it? Because I was trying to control myself. Why? What do you mean, why? Why are you trying to control yourself? You're angry, you felt like throwing the cup, why didn't you throw it? Because there's no point, I'd still be angry and I'd have a broken cup. How do you know how you feel? Maybe you feel terrific. Why do you have to control every single thought that comes into your head? Why don't you let loose once in your life? Do something you feel like doing, not what you think you're supposed to do. Stop controlling yourself. Get drunk, get angry. Come on, break the goddamn cup. Ah! Oh, oh, I hurt my arm. Oh. <laughs> I hurt my arm. You're hopeless. You're a hopeless mental case. Oh, that was a dumb idea. I shouldn't throw up that arm. I've got bursitis. Why don't you live in a closet? I'll leave you meals outside the door and slide in the newspaper. Oh, come on, Oscar. Leave me alone, all right? I hurt easily and I can't help it. You're not going to cry, are you? I think all those tears dripping down your arm is what gave you bursitis. Let me tell you something, Oscar. I may not be the easiest person in the world to live with, but believe me, you could have done a hell of a lot worse. How? What do you mean, how? How would you like to live with Ten Thumbs Murray or Speed and his complaining? Hey, don't you forget, I cook and clean, I take care of this, help, uh, of this house. I save us, a lot of mar uh, save us a lot of money, don't I? Yeah, but then you keep me up all night counting it. What are you talking about, Oscar? We're not always going at each other. We have fun. Fun? Getting a clear picture on Channel 2 isn't my idea of whoopee. We don't always watch TV. Sometimes we read and sometimes we talk. No. I read and you talk. I try to work and you talk. I go to sleep and you talk. We've got your life arranged pretty good, but I'm still looking for a little entertainment. Well, what are you saying? I talk too much? No. No, I'm not complaining. you got a lot to say. What's worrying
hearing me is I'm beginning to listen. Pastor, I've told you a hundred times, just tell me to shut up. I'm not sensitive. I don't think you get my meaning. For a husky man, I've spent enough evenings discussing tomorrow's menu. The night was made for other things. Like what? Like unless I get to touch something soft in the next couple of days. Oh, you mean women. If you want to give it a name, all right, fine, women. Yeah, it's really funny. I, I haven't thought of women in weeks. I failed to see the humor. No, it's really strange. When, when Francis and I were happy, I didn't think there was a single girl out on the street I didn't stare at for 10 minutes. I, I used to take the wrong subway home following a girl that since we broke up, I don't even know what a woman looks like. Well, either I can go downstairs, buy us a couple of magazines, or I can make a phone call. I said, what are you saying? I'm saying let's spend one evening talking to somebody with higher voices than us. Oh, you mean go out on a date? Yes. Well, I, I, I can't. Why? Well, it's just that I've got no feeling for it. I can't explain. Try. Look, Oscar, I get, I get lonely too, but I'm just separated in a couple of weeks. I'm giving you a little time. There isn't any time left. I saw a TV guy and there's nothing on this week. What do you want me to, what do, you want me to do? I mean, all, all I'm asking you for is, is to have dinner with a couple of girls. It's not that hard. All you have to do is eat and talk. You've eaten and talked before. Well, why can't you go by yourself? Why do you need me? Because I may want to come home, and if we walk in and find you washing the windows, it puts a damper on things. <laughs> oh, well, fine. I'll take a pill and go to sleep. Why do you take a pill when you can take a girl? Because I feel guilty, all right? That's the way I feel. Maybe you think it's stupid, maybe you think it's the dumbest thing in the world, but that's the way I feel. Look, for all I care, you can take her in the kitchen and make a blueberry pie. But I think it's a lot healthier than sitting in your room writing Francis' name throughout the crossword puzzles. <laughs> Just for one night, talk to somebody else. But who? The only single girl I know is my secretary. I don't think she likes me. Leave that one to me. There's two single girls that live in this apartment. English girls. One's a widow, the other's a divorcee. They're a bare relapse. How do you know? I was trapped in the elevator with them last week. What do they look like? Don't worry, yours is very pretty. Not worry. Wait a minute. Which one's mine? The divorcee. The divorcee? Why do I get the divorcee? I don't care. You want the widow? No, I don't even want the widow. I don't even want the divorcee. I'm just doing this for you. Look, I don't care. Take whoever you want. When they come in, just point to the sister of your choice. I just want to have a couple of laughs. All right, fine. All right. Don't say fine, Felix. I want you to promise me that you're going to try to have a good time. I promise. Again. I promise. And no writing in the book. $1.30 for the cab. No writing in the book. No one is to be called Francis. It's Gwendolyn and Cecily. No Francis. No sighing, crying, moaning, or groaning. I'll smile from 7 to 12. And this above all, no talk of the past, only the present and the future. Now that's the new Felix I've been looking for. Now this is going to be a beautiful night. Wait, where do you want to go? For what? For dinner. Where will we eat? A restaurant? A four of us? It'll cost a fortune. We got to eat. Hey, I got a good idea. We'll get here. Here? Yeah. I'll cook. We'll save 30 40 dollars. What kind of double date is that? You're going to be in the kitchen all night. No, I won't. I'll put it up there in the afternoon. Hey, once I get my potatoes in, I'll have all the time in the world. Who you call? Francis. I'm going to get her a recipe for Wonder Boy. Girls will be crazy about it. Start with uh, what time is it? I don't 
and I really don't know what to do. Well, maybe we should try sleeping with an air conditioner. We have a new one. I know, but we have. <laughs>
are always so polite. Speak beautifully. Always yes, never yeah. She's done it all. But she's the kind of woman who, uh... <laughs>
Talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. What do you want to know? I want to know if you're going to spend the rest of your life not talking to me. Because if you are, I'm going to buy a radio. Well, I see. You're not going to talk to me. All right. I can act childish too, you know. Two can play at this game. I can go on without talking for as long as you can. Then why the hell don't you shut up? <laughs> are you talking to me? You had your chance to talk last night. I begged you to come upstairs with me. From now on, I never want to hear another word of yours from that shampooed head as long as you live. <laughs> and that's a warning, Felix. Well, I stand warned over and out. All right. There's the key to the back door. You stick to your room in the hallway and you won't get hurt. Are you serious? I really think you're serious. Are you serious? Felix, this is my apartment. Everything in this apartment is mine. The only thing here that's yours is you. You stick to your room and you speak softly. Are you serious? Okay. Well, let me remind you that I pay half the rent and I'll walk into your room I want. Where are you going? I'm going to walk in your bed. Stay out of there! Tell me where to go. I pay $120 a month. Well, that was off season. Starting tomorrow, the rates have changed. It's $12 a day. All right, fine. There you go. I'm paid up for the day. Now I'm going to walk in your bedroom. Stay out of there. Well, let's just, hey, let's just everybody calm down, huh? All right, Felix, I'm warning you. You want to stay here? I don't want to see you. I don't want to hear you, and I don't want to smell your cooking. Now get the spaghetti off my poker table. <laughs> What's so funny? That's not spaghetti, it's linguine. <laughs> Hold on, I might have missed it. No, it's coming, it's coming. 
You're also one of the biggest slobs in the world. I see. Completely undependable, Finish. unreliable, and irresponsible. You done? I uh, keep going. I think you're on a roll. No, that's it. That's it. Now you've been told off. How do you like that? Keep good. Because now I'm going to tell you off. For six months, I've lived in this apartment, all alone in eight rooms. I was dejected, disgusted, and despondent. Then you moved in. My closest, dearest friend. After three weeks of close personal contact, I am about to have a nervous breakdown. Do me a favor, Felix. Move into the kitchen. Live with your pots and your pans and your ladle and your meat thermometer. When you want to come out, just ring a bell. I'll go into my bedroom. I'm asking you nicely, Felix, as a friend. Stay out of my way! Hey, 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 walk on the paper where the floors are wet.
there's spaghetti all over the kitchen? Yes, I know. It's not spaghetti, it's linguine. Oh, I thought it was spaghetti. Well, why shouldn't I mention his name? Who? Felix. Well, what's happened? Has something happened? Yeah, what's the matter with Felix? All right, fine. I threw him out, all right? I, I threw him out. Let it be on my head. Well, let what be on your head? <laughs> How the hell should I know? Felix put it there. Ask him. <laughs> He'll go to pieces. I know Felix. He's going to try something crazy. Guys, why do you think I did it? I didn't do it to be selfish. I didn't do it to be cruel. I did it for you. I did it for all of us. What are you talking about? Come on, Roy. We've all been through the ashtrays and the napkins and the bacon and lettuce and tomato sandwiches. But that was just the beginning. <laughs> that was just the beginning. Do you guys know what he was planning for the next Friday night's poker game? It's a change of pace. Do you have any idea? What? A luau. <laughs> a Hawaiian luau. Spare ribs, roast pork, and fried rice. They don't play poker like that in Honolulu. Oscar, one thing has nothing to do with the other. We all know Felix, and we all know he's impossible, but he's still our friend, and I'm still worried about him. And I'm not worried. Who do you think threw him out of here in the first place? Francis. What? Francis threw him out in the first place, you threw him out in the second place. Now whoever he lives with next is going to throw him out in the third place. Don't you see? It's Felix. He does it to himself. Why? I don't know why. He doesn't know why. There are people like that. There's a whole tribe in Africa that hit themselves on the head all day long. <laughs> well, I'm not going to worry about him. Why should I? He's not worried about me. He's out there in the world somewhere, soaking and crying and having a wonderful time. You know, you know, if he had a spark of human decency, he would leave us all alone and go back to Blanche. Why? Because it's his wife. No, Blanche is your wife. His wife is Francis. What are you, some kind of wise guy? <laughs> Alright, it's over. The poker game is finished, alright? I don't, I don't feel like playing anymore. Who's playing? We didn't even start. Is that all you can do is complain? Aren't you even worried? I thought you just said you're not worried about it. I'm not worried, damn it. I'm not worried. It's him. I'll bet it's him. Don't let him in. He's not welcome in this house. I see we gotta let You guys, don't let him in. I'm not gonna give him the satisfaction of knowing we've been worried about it. But Sit down and play cards like nothing happened. Oscar. All right, buddy, open the door. Oh, hello. How are you doing? Um, it's not him, Oscar. Oh, hi, Cecily. Boys, I'd, uh, I'd like you to meet Cecily Pigeon. Gwendolyn Pigeon, please, don't get up. May I give you a moment, Mr. Madison? Well, certainly, but what's the problem? I think you know. I've come for Felix's things. Felix? My Felix? Yes, Felix Unger, that poor, sweet, tortured man who's up in my flat this very moment pouring his heart out to my sister. You hear, guys? I'm worried sick and he's upstairs getting tea and stuff. Well, Felix doesn't want to stay. Please tell him to stay. I can get a hotel or something. Oh, hi, fellas. No, I can We have plenty of room. It is a very comfortable sofa, isn't it? It's enormous, and we rented an air conditioner. And we just don't like the idea of you wandering around the street looking for a place to live. Well, I'd be in the way. Wouldn't I be in the way? How could you possibly be in anyone?
sound like a singing band she threw out a few weeks ago is because I'm not. Oh, cut it out. I will when I see her. This is Oscar's wife. Oh. Hang on a second. Yeah, I got a pretty good idea why you're calling. You got my checks, right? Good. So now I'm all paid up, right? Good. No, Branch, I haven't been winning at the track. I've uh, just been able to save a little bit of money. You don't have to thank me. I'm just doing what's right. Did, uh, did Brucey get the goldfish I sent him? Good. Uh, the, the apartment? No, I, I think you'd be surprised. It's in, uh, it's in really good shape. Uh, listen, no, yeah, go ahead. You can call any time. I'm home a lot now. Yeah. All right. Good night. Well, so long, Mr. Madison. You need me clean down? I got a dollar fifteen out. Hey, where are you going? You're not going to break up the game, are you? Oh, never. Marriages may come and go, but the game must go on. So long, Francis. So long, Blanche. <laughs> Are we just going to sit around or are we going to play cards? We're going to play cards. Good, then let's play cards. Please, watch your cigarettes. This is my house, not a pigsty. Our director has done a great job.